The new mid-set Uncharted Realms releases on September 8th and from playing it on the PB I've had so much more fun with the changes they've made that I'm really excited to talk about in this video. But don't just take it from me. Um, I think just it's going to be a better set than the one before. <laughs> Anyways, okay. The biggest and most fun change is at the end of the video so make sure you stick around for that. But anyway, here's 12 reasons why the mid-set is just better than set 7. Astral is still in the mid-set, but it's been reworked. Now Astral will give you loot based on the total star level of all your Astral units. In set 7, Astral is far too easy and too reliable to 3-star any Astral of your choice, which was addressed by making the Astral units weaker than other 3-star units. This just meant that these units only felt impactful if they were 3 star and even then they still felt underwhelming. But now, in the mid-set, Astral gives you Econ which you can use however you want. For example, you could reroll to 3 star your Astrals for better loot, or you could use the Econ to level. With this change, the Astral units can be buffed to feel like real units that actually have an impact on your board. And now you have to actively try to 3 star your Astrals, rather than it being so free as before. The new Lagoon trait is also partially an Econ trait, granting better loot the higher the cast counter is. This diversifies Econ traits and allows players to be much more flexible early, mid and even late game, so lobbies will have a lot more variance as players have many more options at their disposal. The mid set removed Trainer, Legend and Rebel, all of which were problematic traits in set 7. Trainer had way too much value early game as it was essentially a free unit that had a lot of HP and anti heal. With a lot of stacks, a late game Nomzi could be insane but only if you could get those stacks. Playing train in late game felt useless as it would take far too long to get stacks and you could never catch up to someone who had Nomzi in stage 2. This just felt bad. Usually the trainer units were trait or CC bots and were best left unitemized. This paired with the meditation augment made trainer very strong as Nomzi and the trainers would reliably cast numerous times. So trainer has been removed but now Nomzi is a playable unit who summons a former trainer based on what Nomzi's third trait is that game. So you no longer lose out on any stacking if you don't play trainer in stage 2 and these summon units can't hold items which ultimately doesn't make a difference. Also meditation has been removed from the game as well which is probably to avoid the powerful trainer meditation combo that was common in set 7. This is great because now Nomzi needs items to scale with and boards won't have a free unit that can output a lot of damage with anti heal. Now you have to invest in Nomzi with items rather than time which is much more reasonable and fair. Legend has also been completely removed, taking some of the insane top end comps with it like Legend Cavalier which was particularly broken as the Cavalier bonus which grants double the armor and MR and is only supposed to last for 4 seconds would be granted to the Legend units for the entirety of combat. Legend's fat was also insane late game on units like Yasuo and Shivana because the insane HP and AP it could grant. Revel being removed is also great as the insane early game damage you could hit at higher breakpoints of Revel is no longer possible. It also takes a frankly stupid Revel spat interaction with units like Anivia and Daisha where each instance of ability damage would proc the Revel firework, which resulted in beyond absurd burst damage. The mid set also slightly reworks Daisha, where now she no longer deals any physical damage from her autos. This is specifically to maintain her identity as a magic damage carrier because Deja's barrages would each apply her AD and magic damage, so essentially Deja would triple any AD she had. Deja with a Whisper Spat would proc Whispers 6 times per auto, resulting in astronomically fast AP and AD scaling, which was completely broken with such obscene damage and almost impossible to counter. They've also slightly reworked Tempest, we're now at Granted Damage Multiplier after the Lightning Strikes, so now Tempest units will lean towards being carries like Lee Sin. Not every unit wants attack speed, so this damage bonus is a good change as a damage multiplier can be used more flexibly. This also makes a Tempest bat more valuable now, especially for damage carries. The mid set removes a lot of units that were simply problematic, underwhelming or provided too much CC. These are units like Elise who had invulnerability which could keep resetting and solo your entire board, Pike who never found his time to shine and felt out of place, and Orn who provided a lot of CC, had great traits and was a great tank. Cheaper units that had CC were also removed like Ash, Thresh and Jinx, so the remaining units with CC are generally higher cost. So overall there is less CC in the mid set and the units possessing CC will mostly be in the late game. The new units in the mid set allow for better pathways and transitioning as there are several carries and tanks across the costs, so there's many more options and possibilities to play around and ultimately the mid set has much more freedom and flexibility. 
These new units bolster traits that were having issues in set 7 like Warrior, which now has a 4 cost tank so now there is a reliable frontliner in the late game Warrior board. Two new variants to the Treasure Dragon have been added. Firstly, there's the Ordered Treasure Dragon, which can give you a Radiant Item, Remover or a Forger, and Full Items and Gold. This has a 30% chance of appearing. The other addition is the Chaos Treasure Dragon, which can give a variety of things like Target Dummies, Emblems, and even Orn Items. This also has a 30% chance of appearing. This leaves a 40% chance of the Treasure Dragon being the usual one. So now, the Treasure Dragon is significantly more interesting and can be a lot more impactful. There's more variability and depth that you can play around, however you may not be able to rely on the Treasure Dragon so heavily as before to complete a certain item you want. Having more variability after the last augment allows for more skill expression. For example, now you'll have to consider if getting a target dummy so you can greed and potentially level is better than rolling to complete or find an item you want. There's also been some amazing changes to items. Frozen Heart has been removed and replaced by Protector's Vow, which is actually a tank item. This new item is fantastic as it can be utilised in so many different ways, unlike Frozen Heart which was particularly strong on Assassins. Protector's Vow can store with the shielding and makes nearby units tankier so it's especially great when you have multiple units of the same range so they clump together and multiple units get the bonus. So Assassins can't be used for the backline slow anymore and will be used as actual Assassins. Attack speed slow is extremely powerful and having an assassin slow your entire backline was such obscene value for such little cost. Now attack speed slow is much harder to acquire in the mid set which makes it far less frustrating. Ragewing spat has been completely removed from the game, there is no longer any way to get it. Swiftshot replaces Ragewing which is a much more useful and applicable spat for most units in the set. Usually units want to keep casting so the Rage Wing mana lock was detrimental for most units. Whereas Swiftshot gives range and attack speed which can be further capitalised on with stacking items like Rage Blade. This is a great change as Spatula feels more useful with a Swiftshot spat and getting Rage Wing spat through Augment or Tome no longer feels bad. Tome is now more reliable for a power spike on a Rage Wing board. They've also completely removed Whisper's Emblem from the game as well. This is good because this item made Vertical Whispers far easier to achieve, which gave insane AD and AP scaling on units like Yasmo who apply AoE damage and can get several stacks very easily in a single cast. Yasmo in particular gets absurd damage with the AD and an extreme amount of tankiness with the AP. A Whispers comp had an extremely high ceiling as there were numerous carries that can deal an extreme amount of damage with such fast AD and AP scaling. This is also a minor nerf to Siphon as it's not as easy for him to get the stacks anymore and it will take longer to get enough stacks to insta-kill units. Also, as Vertical Whispers has fewer units, there's now a lot more options as to what units you can play, so this change makes comps around this trait much more diverse. Shoujin is also getting slightly adjusted. It's now a source of AP, so it's no longer an item you build last as your unit can cast more often and deal more damage with this item. Mana generation suffered a lot in set 7, so this change improves it by mixing it with damage. Assassin's position in the set has also been rebalanced. Assassin's Spat is now an emblem, is no longer craftable, and some augments that gave Assassin's Spat were also removed. So that means that some of the obscene damage from variations like Assassin, Olaf, or Siphon is much harder to achieve, and so these units and traits don't have to be balanced around this possibility and no longer need to be preemptively weaker. This combined with the removal of Frozen Heart make Assassins actually feel like Assassins, as the crit bonus can be buffed and they will have damage items. So in the mid set, Assassins can be properly balanced around the exclusivity of the emblem. The mid set adds more depth to traits with augments, there's more trait specific augments to both existing and new traits, and there's even more general augments. There are more augments for traits that were also in set 7 that completely transform how you play certain traits. So even if you play the same comp, augments will be more transformative to your board and how you can play around them. Trainer and Legend had no augments whatsoever and Revel only had 4. The new traits Lagoon, Darkflight and Dragon all have multiple unique augments. So now there's many more ways to play the same traits and there's many ways to play the new traits. The augment balance was already a great improvement in set 7, especially coming from 6.5. And the mid set has minor tweaks that further improve on this balance. For example, Cluttered Mind grants 3 XP with a full bench rather than 4, but now grants 3 tier 1 champions. So considering this can only be offered at 2-1, you can now get champions to fill your bench, which is especially helpful if you cannot afford to fill your bench. This will still put you ahead of your opponent's level early game and will put you in a strong position in the mid game, 
but this augment will not be so reliable for you to fast dine so easily as it was before. Now you will have to play a stable late game and potentially spend gold to actually hit level 9. Woodland Charm is also coming back and now spawns the clone before combat so you can actually see what unit will be cloned, what its stats are and you can position it. Now this will actually be an extremely strong augment with some really high potential, especially with dragons, cavaliers and HP increasing items. These subtle changes go a really long way in improving the general augment balance, feel and health of the game. A lot of breakpoints for traits are getting adjusted to make some traits easier to utilise and others harder. For example, Jade was extremely easy to play in set 7 as you could just chase the trait vertically, but now it's not an easy plug in and play anymore, and Jade comps will be a lot more diverse as the breakpoints are easier to hit. Likewise, Raging will become easier to utilise as his breakpoints go up every 2 now. Early game sets will be a lot more reliable and easy to use, likewise with Sire in the late game. In the mid set, traits are significantly more flexible, so they're a lot more fun and interesting to play because you can achieve many more comps with many more ways to play. There are 5 entirely new dragons which are Nomzi, Zippy, Som, Swain and Terra. And it's worth noting that these dragons are not just skin variations. Nomzi is a modified version of the Gromp, Zippy is based off Kled's Mount Skarl, Swain is in his dragon form, Terra is the Mountain Drake and the devs made an entirely new model for Som which is inspired by Kaiser's Lagoon skin. So these new dragons look and feel entirely different and unique which makes this set feel much more diverse and richer. This is also a solution to the dragon problem in set 7 where high rolling dragons could put you really far ahead of the lobby. Now there are more dragons in the pool and the unit's cost and power have been slightly reduced. So the power of an early dragon has been slightly diluted. So hitting an early dragon is slightly less impactful and oppressive but it's still a high roll. This is by far the biggest and best change they could have made. In the mid set you can now play dragons together and dragon is even a chaseable trait. This change opens up so many more options and possibilities to what boards you could perform unlike set 7 where you could only field a single dragon, which was incredibly inflexible and limited your options significantly. Building items for your dragons in set 7 was very specific per dragon, so if you made items for a dragon it was very difficult to transition or pivot into another. However this change opens so many more comps with and around dragons, flexing around dragons and item holding becomes significantly easier, as there are dragons that share similar item options. You will definitely notice how comps are way less restrictive and linear. There's so much more variability now and that's not including Mirage variations, Nomsi straight changes and the new dragons. With the reduced costs of dragons you can now hold more dragons and play around what you roll a lot easier without having your econ impacted too harshly. Removing the limit they impose on dragons is a massive reason why the mid set is just better than set 7. The set actually lives up to the name of Dragonlands now. These changes may seem small individually but altogether they completely transform the set and make the mid set way more exciting and enjoyable to play because there's much more fantasy and flexibility as to what insane stuff you could pull off. I cannot wait to continue playing this mid set as it's just a massive improvement on set 7 so make sure you subscribe for more content to come. Let me know what you want to see and what you think. What are you looking forward to? Is there something you're not looking forward to? And what do you think is going to be fun? Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.